the hungry dead, raised from the grave by science or evil. The zombie is a shambling corpse, single-minded in its drive to endlessly consume, making it both frightening and thrilling. The zombie is a weird and dangerous creature, hungry for the flesh or brains of its human victims, created through either magic or a natural disease or even divine retribution. This creature is a paragon of man's greatest fears. However, the danger and terror do not arise from any supernatural ability the zombie possesses beyond being reanimated. Rather, it's this creature's very nature that makes it so essentially horrific. Being a rotting corpse, the zombie is often at a disadvantage, even physically, and has no conscious awareness to speak of, operating solely on an amoeba-like level of instinct. But what makes these creatures so effective are the three main aspects of their nature. Firstly, since they are dead, they feel no pain, and catastrophic damage to vital organs are little more than an inconvenience to them. As a consequence, the second most prominent aspect is the tirelessness of this creature with those who would flee or defend themselves from this monster would eventually give in to fatigue the zombie is incapable of halting its hunger and drive to consume the living finally the zombie's reproductive method sees it turning its bitten or partially consumed victims into yet more zombies and through sheer number they may easily overcome the mightiest of bastions with enough time of course these aspects have applications that some might find valuable Often, the zombie is used as a slave to conduct the bidding of their evil masters, where their tireless bodies and barely aware minds make for perfect, unquestioning servants. This also sees them often employed as attrition forces in armies, where their essential disposability makes them equally useful, if not more so than living soldiers. Of course, the effectiveness of a zombie over time reduces as this creature decays further and further into nothing because despite being reanimated, the zombie is still undergoing the normal processes of decomposition. As such, a strategy sometimes employed to overcome zombies involves simply waiting until they are too decomposed to pose any reasonable threat. Despite being a simple creature, it is clear that the zombie is quite a formidable foe, or, alternatively, an incredibly useful tool. It would be an understatement to say that the zombie is ubiquitous in modern culture, from books to films, video games to stage productions, and even faux government publications, the zombie has permeated large swathes of modern culture. Even though it embodies our fear of disease, evil, death, and the unnatural, it is also a source of great interest and indeed catharsis, so much so that many of its terrifying aspects become muted. What's more, is that the simplicity of this monster makes it eminently useful for many narrative and metaphorical applications. The zombie came into prominence with George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, which is a group of people stranded in a house surrounded by ghouls. This latter point is interesting in that although the film was the seminal zombie media, it did not actually feature zombies. Instead, the ghouls are the dead possessed by evil spirits, and although superficially similar to zombies, they lack much of what we expect from the modern zombie, such as its epidemiological nature. However, the public had caught on to the idea of the zombie, which, by way of pressure, even forced Romero to change his mind about the ghouls in his movie. The modern zombie differs greatly from any of its previous analogues, in that its condition is almost always brought about by some disease that has either randomly evolved or has escaped from a government research facility. Both of these origins reveals much about our own relationship with disease and our technology, namely that we are deeply frightened by the frequent, albeit over-exaggerated, outbreaks of disease in modern society, and that we fear our own capacity for self-destruction, a remnant of the nuclear age revitalized through disease warfare. But the most poignant of these lessons is how our deep-seated fear of one another and various Freudian psychopathic tendencies truly are. In modern culture, we find guilt-free catharsis and fulfilled power fantasies in the vicarious destruction of these creatures that were once our neighbors. 
This combined with the collapse of a society in which the individual is often left feeling a lack of purpose and is impotent to do anything about this has ensured the zombie apocalypse trope will survive long into the future. Sometimes we see the zombie as a punishment inflicted upon those who would interfere with nature or fate. The mad scientist who wanted to cheat death, or a family using an old Native American burial ground to revive their dead child. They are all afterwards afflicted with the horror of their actions, and must somehow set right their trespasses against the universe. The biblical raising of the dead during Armageddon has also been retroactively assumed to involve zombies. Even serious bureaucratic outlets have not escaped the social touch of the zombie. In May of 2011, the United States Center for Disease Control released a guide to dealing with an outbreak of a zombie virus. While this publication was intended as a tangential learning guide for actual disease control, the zombie theme demonstrates just how widespread this myth is. Indeed, the zombie has been used to discuss many social issues through entertainment. Zombies have represented everything from Western fear of socialism to critiques of rampant consumerism and everything in between, making it perhaps the most versatile metaphor in modern culture and consequently the most valuable. Like many undead creatures, the zombie has been distilled from the nebulous mists of ancient beliefs that see the dead stalk the living with malicious intent. In fact, many modern mythological creatures, such as the vampire, are born from this mythological primordial ooze, as it were. As such, it is difficult to pinpoint the origins of the zombie as a concept. However, because it is a relatively recent cultural development, it is a lot simpler to trace the roots of the modern zombie. The broad strokes of the zombie myth sees it evolving from two primary sources, horror literature as well as Central African and Haitian belief systems. It is possible to trace the association of the living dead with science and technology through Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which sees a mad doctor give life to an amalgam of corpses. This was further added to with other stories such as W.W. W. Jacob's short story The Monkey's Paw, wherein a grief-stricken family wish their recently dead son to life and experience the horrific consequences. The written myth would, by increments, grow to resemble the more modern myth with the influences of Edgar Allan Poe as well as H.P. Lovecraft. Perhaps the most influential was the novel I Am Legend by Robert Matheson, who pitted a lone hero against an army of vampires in a post-apocalyptic world. In fact, George Romero cited this work as one of his more prominent influencing factors for the creation of the Night of the Living Dead, and it is obvious to see how this concept found its way into the modern zombie myth. As for the African and Haitian influences, it is hypothesized that these various cultures gave us the word zombie and other aspects of the myth, such as the mindless nature of this creature. Initially, in Central and Southern Africa, it was believed that witch doctors, the Sangoma and Ingoma, were capable of using the dead as slaves. When populations from these regions were taken to the Caribbean and other areas of the Americas, the various evolutions in the cultures there saw this myth changing from a spiritual base to a chemical one. Supposedly, witch doctors in the area would kidnap people and feed them a cocktail of poisons, the main ingredient of which was a carefully controlled amount of tetrodotoxin derived from the pufferfish. This cocktail would drive the victim into a prolonged stupor, where they were highly susceptible to instruction, but were limited in the complexity of the task they could perform as a result of the stupor. In this manner, the witch doctor would come to own a group of venial slaves. By the subtle and obscure merging of these myths and works of fiction, the modern zombie was born. Although there do exist older creatures that have similar properties that the zombie also draws on, such as the ghoul George Romero attempted to invoke in the Night of the Living Dead. This creature was created when an evil spirit inhabited a corpse, and is mostly found in European and Middle Eastern cultures. We could trace the origin of the ghoul to the Arabic ghoul creature that was a type of demon which could shapeshift, usually into the form of a hyena. The Wendigo is a similar such creature, a monster that feeds in the flesh of humans. It was believed that people could become Wendigos if they ever committed cannibalism. However, occasionally we see variations of this myth where people are possessed by evil spirits and thus become the cannibalistic Wendigo. Although the history of the zombie as we know it today is quite short, it is perhaps a matter of which to be proud, and perhaps also rather informative that we should find how recently the zombie myth came to be. Especially so when we remember how global and enthralling this myth has become in such a short space of time. Unlike most myths, the zombie myth generally conforms to our current understanding of reality, perhaps because it was essentially born in the modern world. In the same way that vampires and other such legends make sense in more superstitious times and cultures, the zombie is quite adapted to our own time and culture. However, 
There are aspects of this myth that are perhaps somewhat unrealistic, such as the undead nature of the zombie. The properties of death and animation are mutually exclusive. Indeed, one of the major components of death is total metabolic inertia. When this occurs, muscles cannot function, as they rapidly deplete adenosine triphosphate within the cells, and due to the absence of a heartbeat, the muscles no longer receive the resources required for the action refractory period, and so remain stalled. Thus, the undead zombie would not be able to function. Therefore, from simple logical extension, we could see that all zombies are essentially alive, as this is a basic mechanical requirement. But if the creature is alive, how might it come to function in the way that it does? Surprisingly, this answer has already been found, and is quite similar to how we answered the question of the vampire. Disease. Much of popular media depicts the zombie reproducing by way of an infectious vector, such as a virus, and many viri in particular are capable of rather astounding transformations to the human body. For the sake of the zombie, these changes might include excess production and secretion of corrosive byproducts due to an over-reliance on anaerobic cell respiration as a result of underutilization or damage to the lungs, even activating the decomposing bacteria present in all humans or overproduction of digestive fluids can easily explain the decay that is observed. This latter point, the digestive fluids, also serve to explain the creature's excessive hunger, with these two aspects inherently linked. Damage to the nervous system resulting in an aggressive, bloodthirsty creature, or even general irrationality, is already observed in nature in the form of the rabies virus. Apart from increasing saliva production, this virus is capable of causing delirium and, oddly enough, hydrophobia in its hosts. Rabies itself is usually transmitted by way of saliva, demonstrating that it is quite possible for infectious diseases, such as a zombie virus, to be transmitted through bites. When considering that the aforementioned hydrophobia is demonstrable of a dramatic cognitive alteration, a rabies analogue is perhaps the most feasible of all candidates for a potential zombie virus. Mortality from rabies usually occurs shortly after these symptoms appear, therefore those infected by rabies do not turn into what we might recognise as a zombie. Though, human intervention to alter the manner in which the virus functions not only solves this roadblock, but also plays into the man-made virus aspect of the zombie myth. It should be mentioned that this concept has already been explored in the film 28 Days Later, where a modified rabies virus escapes the government lab and infects the population of the United Kingdoms, and just shows us how important this myth is to our culture, that we have already contrived the manner in which it may actually come to pass. It is rather unnerving to think that viri rather similar to the zombie virus do indeed exist, and that it is a simple matter of manipulation and a slight alteration of what exists in nature to achieve a real zombie. Although, it should be remembered that biological warfare and testing of this degree is quite strictly regulated and thoroughly controlled. But accidents do happen.